This morning, it's my love rising sun. Three little birds that by my doorstep sing a sweet song, a melody pure and true. Saying, This is my message to you. Good. Good. Well, it is wonderful to be here. It is Saturday morning. It is the second Saturday in August. It is absolutely beautiful here. The sky is blue. The sun is shining. But as always, what makes the day wonderful is that you are here. And so we're going to start with our own made up little song. Good morning to you. Good morning to you. It's story time on Saturday. Is anybody here new? I don't know, but if you are, give us a shout out on the Facebook. Say hello to us. Give us a five finger wiggle if this is your first time here. If you've been here forever and ever, give us a 10 finger wiggle. Here we go. 
Good morning to you. Good morning to you. It's story time on Saturday. Is anybody here new? Hello, hello. Or if you've been here forever and ever, hello. Wonderful. All right, second verse. Good morning to you. Good morning to you. It's story time on Saturday. Let's read a book or two. So we worked our way through a whole bunch of fairy tales and we had an awesome time doing fairy tales. Um, for the rest of August, I've not done this before, we're gonna focus on one person for the whole story time. So today, we are going to be looking at books by, there's the glare, we're gonna be looking at books by Emily Gravett, and we'll talk about that more. So, good morning to you, good morning to you, it's story time on Saturday. Let's read a book or two written and illustrated by Emily Gravett. Some of you recognize this book, I can tell. All right, last verse. Here we go. Get your legs ready. Good morning to you. Good morning to you. Before we get started, some of you are already doing it. That's great. Let's hop like a kangaroo. Hop, 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 hop. We'll do it again. You don't have to be standing, I'm not, but just to get the legs moving is nice. Get the knees up and down. Good morning to you, good morning to you. Before we get started, Freddie, hello if you're out there. Let's, Freddie's a good hopper. Let's hop like a kangaroo, hop, 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 hop. It is wonderful to see story time friends. Hello, Elena, hello, Rosie. I hope that Bubba and Maisie and Big sister are out there too. So it is wonderful to have you all with us. Big sister Lucy. All right, so um, Emily Gravett, and the way that I remember how to say her name is it, it does rhyme a bit with rabbit, gravit and rabbit. Um, she has a fabulous website. So if you get bored by me, <laughs> head over to her website. It's really, really creative. Um, she became an author and an illustrator. I'm not going to say later in life, but it, it wasn't the first thing that she did. Um, and the wonderful story behind the story with this book is that she did this as a part of a class, an illustrator class, this book, and she won a competition. So I just think that's really great. So this is called Wolves. And it's a wonderful transition because when we were doing all of our fairy tales, there were lots of wolves and fairy tales. So, inside flat, wolves. What do wolves really like to eat? It isn't little girls in red hoods. Rabbits shouldn't believe what they read in fairy tales, but this book has the facts. So that's our start to wolves. And you can tell she is a fabulous illustrator. So much creativity. In fact, we're going to go back there. Look at the stamp. Shh. Rabbit went to the library and he chose a book about wolves. Wolves. My page right? I think that's right. Nope, we got stuff together. Gray wolves live in packs of between two and 10 animals. They can survive almost anywhere from the Arctic Circle to the outskirts of towns and villages.
In some areas, wolves have retreated to places where fewer people live, such as forests and woodlands. You gotta look at that picture. This is so creative. Do you see here the trees? But look. The shape of a wolf hat. Isn't that great? They have sharp claws. You can see why she won a competition, can't you? I mean, this is just incredible. Just incredible. Bushy tails. And dense fur, which harbors fleas and ticks. I do not like bugs. Mm. Makes me itch just looking at that page. An adult wolf has 42 teeth. Its jaws are twice as powerful as those of a large dog. Hmm. Anybody getting a little bit worried about our friend the rabbit? Wolves eat mainly meat. They hunt large prey such as deer, bison, and moose. They also enjoy smaller animals like beavers and voles and 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 the glare is bad, but do you see down there at the bottom? It says you can't see. There we go. rabbits. The author would like to point out that no rabbits were eaten during the making of this book. It is a work of fiction. And so, for more sensitive readers, here is an alternate ending. Luckily, this wolf was a vegetarian. So they shared a jam sandwich, became the best of friends, and lived happily ever after. So that is the end of this book, which is so cleverly done by Evelyn, Emily Gravitt. So that was her first book about wolves and again a great transition from the wolves that we've had in our fairy tales. But you know what, let's be honest, rabbits aren't always they, 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 do, they do things that, that annoy humans. So you may know this song. Uh, this is a fun little song. It's called John the Rabbit. And if anybody out there, I keep losing you. I guess my chair's in the wrong place today. Um, that's okay, I can swirl around. Um, if anybody out there has tried to plant anything this summer, anything, anything, you will know that there are lots of furry friends that have come and nibbled on our produce. So this is a fun, cute, short little song. It's called John the Rabbit. Ready? Clap 
clapping, clapping to this song. Hands are for clapping. Let's all clap along. Clap your hands. showed you that it's a book that seems so simple but it's kind of complicated and I've practiced this but already already I've got the words mixed up so beautiful illustrations here we go orange pear apple bear orange pear Bear. Apple, pear, orange, bear. Hmm. Orange, pear, apple, bear. Orange pear bear. Orange pear apple bear. Apple bear orange pear. Orange bear. Pear bear. Apple bear.
there. Simple and so beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And again at the end, isn't that nice? So that is called Orange Pear Apple Bear by Emily Gravitt. All right, well I heard that there is someone out there who really likes ladybugs. So this is an old song done in a folksy way and it's the Ladybug Picnic. So if there's somebody out there named Nora who really likes ladybugs, I heard that. This song's for you. Ladybug Picnic. Three, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Ladybugs came on a ladybug picnic. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And they played all day at the ladybug picnic. They had twelve sacks, so they ran sack races, and they fell on their backs, and they fell on their faces. Ladybugs twelve at the ladybug picnic. Oh, you do sing ladybug picnic. They played jump rope, but the rope had broke, so they just sat around telling knock knock jokes. Ladybugs twelve at the ladybug picnic. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and they chatted away at the ladybug picnic. They talked about the high price of furniture and rugs and fire insurance for ladybugs. Fire insurance ladybugs for ladybugs. Twelve at the ladybug picnic. Twelve. Creatures that come up when we're having food outside and sometimes it is the ladybugs speaking of things that we encounter outside here is our yes it is our third book by Emily Gravitt the reason why I keep pausing with Gravitt is I keep telling myself it rhymes with rabbit because I think she's an English illustrator and I think in our American heads we'd probably say grave it but it's Rabbit. Another beautiful book. So this is called Bear and Hare Share. Ooh, Bear and Hare went for a walk. <gasps> a flower. And again, I'm going to zoom in here manually so that you can see the amazing artwork. Share, asked Bear. Mine, said Hare. But Bear didn't care. Bear and Hare went for a walk. Ooh, ice cream. Share, asked Bear. Uh, mine, said Hare. Hmm. What kind do you think that is? I think it's something with cherries. But Bear didn't care. Oh, what a sweet, sweet Bear. Bear and Hare went for a walk. Ooh, a balloon. Share, asked Bear. Mine, said Hare. And I'm going to turn the page, but you already know what happens. Because you know, look at that. You know exactly 
He knew exactly what's going to happen. Yep, you were right. You were right. And I'm so glad that I didn't hear that balloon pop because I do not like the sound of balloons when they pop. Bear and Hare went for a walk. Ooh, honey. But Bear was not there. Hmm. Hmm. Once again, I think you know what's going to happen. But Bear says, I don't care. the end. Isn't that a beautiful book? Very simple, gorgeous illustrations. Again, there's a glare here today. That's okay because it means the sun is shining. Bear and hair share. All right. Do you think we should do it? Let's do it. Let's have a silly dance contest. Let's have a silly dance contest. Hang on. Let me find it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. You can't go wrong with a silly dance contest. Now this is called the Silly Dance Contest, where the silliest dancer is always the best. You just dance, dance, dance as silly as you please, and when the music stops, then you freeze. Ready? Dance any way you want to, dance any way you please, dance any way you want to, but stop when I say freeze. Hold that freeze as quiet as you can. You can blink. And get ready for the Silly Dance Contest Round 2. Dance any way you want to, dance any way you please. Dance any way you want to, but stop when I say freeze. I think I'm pushing the same kind of way, but that's okay. Like a statue. Now if you look silly, you're doing great. Thank goodness. And this time we're going to jump up and down as high as we can. Jump as high as you want to, jump as high as you please. Jump as high as you want to, but stop when I say Some people freeze with a silly face. Sorry. You never know. And this time, let's dance as fast as we can. <laughs> Okay. 
another beautiful one. This one has more words. And on her website, uh, when you listen to her talk about her process, you know, people say, which comes first, the pictures or the words? And she said, it just depends. Sometimes it's the words or sometimes it's the pictures. Um, but this book is called Tidy. Um, and it's a clever book. And it's one of those books where, do you see the cellophane there? Yeah, so that's clever. And then it's cut out. So not only are the illustrations just incredible, um, but there's so much depth to the actual, the actual page. So once again, it's called Tidy, which is a word I like. But in this book, we'll learn something more about the word tidy. Deep in the forest lived a badger named Pete who tidied and cleaned and kept everything neat. He tidied the flowers by checking each patch and snipping off anything that didn't quite match. There's Pete, our badger. He tidied the fox by grooming his fur. He untangled each knot and each twig and each burr. You have to look at this one too, because he's using he's using a porcupine brush on the fox. I'm not sure if it's a live porcupine or not, but pretty funny. He tidied the birds from the big to the small by brushing their beaks and bathing them all. They've got their little toothbrushes. He picked up stray sticks, he swept and he rubbed, he polished the rocks, and he scoured and he scrubbed. Now, you and I both know that you really, you shouldn't take the vacuum cleaner outside like that. So when a leaf fell, well, see Badger? Oh, poor Badger. Pete tidied up. But still, he wasn't happy. Now the trees looked bare and scrappy. And so to make it look all neat, Pete undertook a mighty feat. And I have to say, Pete's not busy come October, November. He can come to my house, tidy up the leaves. But it's going to extremes. He dug up every single tree. But then it rained and there was a flood. And afterward, <laughs> A lot of mud. Oh, it's a lot of mud. Pete called in the diggers. He called in the mixers. He called in the concrete, the rakers, the fixers. See the name of the, the digger? The digger's called Tidy. Oh, look at the rabbit. Look at the worms. No mud, no leaves, no mess, no trees. Perfectly tidy and perfectly neat. This forest is practically perfect, said Pete. I'm hungry, he thought. I deserve
deserve a treat. So he hunted around for something to eat. But the beetles and worms that he usually found were under the concrete deep in the ground. So I'm gonna hold it up here. There's another page I need to read out, but you must see under the concrete all the little worms and all the little creatures that live under the ground. Trouble is you can't get to them. And so Pete decided to go home instead. If he couldn't have dinner, he'd go straight to bed. But when he arrived and took out his key, there wasn't a door where the door used to be. Later that night, Pete tossed and he turned. His belly was empty, it rumbled, it churned. As he lay in his mixer wide, wide awake, he started to think, I've made a mistake. So, the very next morning, when it got light, he set about trying to put everything right. Tidy the sledgehammer. Boy, that's a lot of concrete. Whew, what a noise. Then the animals came from the strong to the weak and they lent them a paw or a claw or a beak. had been, but maybe less ordered and not quite as clean. And Pete, well, he promised to tidy up less, but if he succeeded, it's anyone's guess. is the end of Tidy. And I just love this last bit too. It's the end of the book. There's this vacuum and he's vacuuming up some of the words in the book. Yeah. So I just think that's a wonderful book. Words and pictures. What a great combination and what a great theme. Because you know what? Nature's not tidy. It's really not. Yesterday I had 12 turkey in my yard. Of course the deer were there, and then I found the groundhog. <laughs> so you know what? There, it's not tidy, but it sure is beautiful. So I guess the flip side of having things tidy and neat is that we really do have a beautiful world. So that was a lot of fun. I am really taken with Emily Gravit. Gravit like rabbit, and she draws a lot of rabbits. Uh, again, if you're more interested in more about her work, check out her website, which is super fun, super beautiful, and has some great ideas. So once again, it has been wonderful to be with you. Um, I love Saturday mornings, and it is always great to, to catch up with you and to see you. Um, I want to say that I am sending best wishes and moving blessings to our wonderful Lucy and Bubba and Maisie and their family. And we will meet again because I'm going to come out. I'm going to come out and see you one day. I think I will. Um, but it just makes me, it made me think actually this morning. Um, long, long time ago, and it was a mixed experience, but I did spend some time as a Girl Scout. And there was a song and it was, make new friends, but keep the old. One is silver and one is gold. And I remember that I got it wrong. And I don't, shocking, I don't want to do wrong. But I didn't understand that the purpose of the song was that the friends that we've had for a long time are the ones that are gold. And I thought, well, what if you just meet someone and they're just perfect, they're wonderful, and you don't know them for very long at all, but they can be your, be wonderful people in your life. So I don't think that we have to spend a lot of time together or know each other for very long to know what incredible people that you are and blessings. So.
So, this is for you as you travel out to the West. You have been this for us, and you will be this for other people too. Here we go. You are light. And we'll be back next week. Keep shining. And you're golden.